So, welcome everyone on uh, uh, my talk about Apache Caraf in uh, real life. Um, so, um, I hope all the attenders I advised to came are uh, here. Um, so, first of all, uh, it's going to be a talk about a couple of projects uh, which uh, um, can be run on top of uh, Caraf. I mean, uh, there will be next talks uh, tomorrow about uh, Camel, about uh, also um, open source integration framework. So I will not go uh, into detail. I will just talk a little bit more about the integrations with the Caraf, about the possible uh, problems and uh, solutions, uh, and also how to make your solution uh, modular and uh, possible to extend it without any bigger trouble. Uh, so what I have seen on, on uh, this Apache Con is that everybody talks about the big data. And <laughs> this talk won't, to be, uh, won't be about the big data. However, uh, what is uh, funny, all the lessons uh, I have learned uh, was about the big data project uh, running on top of uh, Apache Caraf. So uh, I will talk about the infrastructure stuff, but uh, everything we have made was uh, related to the big data. Uh, so, the, again, the uh, agenda is um, rather short. Uh, we'll start from the uh, history of Caraf, uh, how it was born, what for, and uh, uh, what was the transition from, uh, from the initial stage to what Caraf is currently. Uh, I'm going to talk also about the Caraf bases, uh, which uh, are more or less uh, the same since, uh, since ever. Um, I'm going to talk also about a big deeper drive into the OGI because uh, it's something which is uh, there in Caraf, uh, something which people uh, try to use and uh, which gives lots of possibilities, but uh, uh, usually it's uh, just um, uh, maybe not overused, but underused uh, compared to what can be achieved. I'm going to talk also about the modularity versus extensibility. Uh, just to uh, identify what, is the, what, what things uh, can be done with just modular solution and what gives you uh, making uh, your solution really extensible, right? Because those two things are, are different, uh, of course, and uh, um, there are different patterns going there and uh, uh, different, um, let's say, benefits from being in two different states. Um, I'm going to talk also about the uh, Caraf based solution, uh, so what are the possibilities and uh, um, tools you can use to make uh, your uh, project running on top of, of Apache Caraf. Um, at the end, I will talk a little bit about uh, what we have learned uh, by using Apache Caraf in our project. And uh, I'm going to give you a short introduction what uh, is changed in uh, Caraf 2.0, uh, which is already out. Okay. Uh, each presentation has uh, to uh, have this about me uh, slide, uh, so I'm not the uh, um, exception. Uh, I also have some, uh, so I'm Paul. Uh, I mean, uh, my accent uh, suggests that uh, I might be German, but uh, I don't know, maybe by the level of my uh, English knowledge, uh, you can assume me I'm German, but I'm not. I'm Paul. Uh, so <laughs> I was made in Poland, I still lived in Poland. Uh, and just uh, traveling a, a bit, uh, doing some stuff uh, around the open source. Uh, privately, I am a husband, uh, and uh, uh, you know, it's kind of a uh, uh, different state if you go there. Uh, and yeah, since uh, open source uh, competences are, um, let's say, something, uh, something which uh, everybody looks at, uh, but they are rather hard to find on the market. Uh, it uh, implicitly uh, drives me to traveling. And this picture was made shortly after this uh, uh, Vulcano uh, throw away lots of shit in the sky uh, in 2010. Uh, <laughs> I was lucky that I was not locked in on the Heathrow and uh, I was lucky to not spend uh, three days at the airport waiting for, for the connection. Uh, and I'm also a construction worker, so that's my uh, kind of the physical activities I try to do. And what I have learned from the construction is uh, actually software is uh, easy compared to, to making a construction. And th there is also lots of interesting stuff uh, about the hardware integration 
uh, the Internet of Things uh, and so on, it makes great possibilities in the buildings. I mean, if I could make uh, more time, I would love to, to go into that. So let's start from a very short history of Apache Caraf. Uh, as you know, uh, Caraf is already a top-level project, but uh, it was started as a service mix for kernel uh, in 2007. And uh, the reason why uh, um, Service Mix kernel was created was mainly because Service Mix 3 had no possibility to version uh, artifacts. Uh, it was JBI uh, implementation, and uh, uh, the JBI spec was pretty weak on the versioning, and uh, all the jars was duplicated across different uh, services you were running. So guys uh, driving Service Mix decide to okay, if we cannot make the versioning right, maybe it's a good idea to go to the OGI, which already supports uh, multiple versions at the same time, uh, sorry, uh, multiple libraries at the same time and uh, uh, different versions running next to each other. So they made it. Uh, they started building a Caraf on top of uh, OGI framework. And uh, the framework, if you will start with plain OGI, has not, not, not that much, uh, so they started to build infrastructure on top of it. It was that powerful that in 2009, uh, after one of Apache Cons, uh, uh, after one of the talks uh, of uh, leads uh, of, of uh, service, service Mix Kernel, they decide to move uh, Caraf to Apache Felix community uh, to make it closer to OGI uh, community. So the, the step was uh, reasonable and it allowed to grab Camel uh, sorry, Caraf, a bigger community. And finally, in June 2010, uh, Caraf was voted to become a top-level project. Together with a uh, uh, top-level project nomination, we got uh, Caraf 2.0 released. And uh, this is, uh, I, I believe, version which runs uh, the longest. Uh, and Caraf 3.0 was developed uh, almost since 2010, and it took uh, quite a while to release it. Uh, okay. Uh, Caraf versions, the, the first one, uh, which is uh, um, mixed between uh, Apache uh, Service Mix Kernel and uh, Apache Felix community. And uh, as you see, the, the, the first 2.x release is uh, already outdated. Uh, we still have uh, two uh, development branches, 2.2x and 2.3x. Uh, uh, the difference is uh, which versions of OGI specifications you can use there. Uh, 2.3.x is uh, um, used by most of the solutions, including Apache Service Mix, uh, also some other uh, tools like Talent ESP. Uh, OGI 4.3 brings uh, some uh, interesting possibilities like uh, bytecode, waving, and so on. Uh, so it's worth to start from this version if you are looking for Apache Caraf 2.2 is uh, rather close to be shut down and uh, go into the maintenance mode. Uh, if you want to gain uh, new features, then Caraf 3.0 is uh, definitely for you. Uh, you just need to remember it was released uh, a few weeks, few weeks ago, so there might be still some issues. However, they're going to be fixed. Um, okay, and uh, there are two additional versions which uh, are discussed. Uh, so we shortly should go with development of Caraf 3.1 with things which was holding uh, the release of uh, 3.0 for a while. And uh, there is also an under, uh, underlying discussion if we should get the OGI 5 specification into Caraf 2.2. Uh, but we will see uh, how we will land, right? Uh, Caraf basis. Uh, so by most of the time, uh, if there is a talk about Apache Caraf, you probably have seen this picture, right? Uh, which shows that Caraf has a couple of components. And that's right, it has it, right? Uh, um, those things are covered, uh, covering and extending OGI framework, which allows you to make, a, uh, let's say, uh, to be focused on, on your functionality, uh, to don't mess with assembling OGI framework uh, into the shape you want to have, right? Uh, that makes... Uh, development cycle shorter because you don't need uh, to carry on about the updates of service mix, uh, so, sorry, of uh, uh, framework and all bundles which are related. Uh, this is done for you. So free of charge, you will get logging. Uh, you will get also the provisioning and the uh, uh, possibility to create instances from uh, uh, Caraf root. So if you have just one Caraf instance, one Caraf installation, you can 
create children instances running different stuff. Um, it's, it's possible. It's not widely used, but uh, for development purposes, it makes sense because uh, uh, you don't really need to mess with your root installation. You can create a children instance and then run it separately without any troubles. If you want to cr uh, try, uh, for example, um, uh, some kind of the cluster or networking between the nodes, then uh, it's also handy to start a root uh, instance and then from root instance you can start children, which gives you some benefits uh, and don't re really need to start three terminal tabs to do the same thing. Uh, by default, Caraf also brings a blueprint, so uh, if you are in declarative services or you like to, to have uh, injection frameworks, uh, then the blueprint is uh, already there. Also, you can use Spring. It's not mentioned on, uh, on this slide uh, because it's by default not installed by but it's supported and uh, it's easy to get Spring services, um, Spring DM actually running there. Uh, there was also questions about support for uh, Eclipse Gemini, uh, which uh, leverage uh, Spring DM 2.0, uh, but it's not yet supported, so we are still running with uh, outdated Spring DM version. Uh, just giving uh, a short hint, if you are looking for uh, declarative services or for injection framework, then the blueprint is probably the best choice. Even if it has uh, drawbacks, it's it's still uh, better than uh, old dated uh, Spring DM. Uh, what is most uh, valuable add-on for me, I, I think, it's uh, it's a console because uh, you can make lots of things with, with a console. Uh, updating bundles is just one line, and uh, after uh, a first uh, installation uh, after first few uh, commands you, you get used to that that you cannot imagine how you were deploying applications with Tomcat without the console and uh, it's also very handy for system operators which are used to use uh, SSH for managing instances uh, because you can also do a SSH connection to Caraf and you will have the same shell um, and uh, what was told to you by most of the time that the Caraf is application container. So you can pack uh, lots of bundles, put it in, uh, in, into the Caraf, and they will run. But what Caraf actually became uh, is not just container. It's uh, a platform for having multiple applications running next to each other. Uh, so container has limited size, and uh, Caraf in uh, its possibilities is unlimited. Uh, you can imagine running uh, a messaging application next to the web services application, uh, next to the, some native uh, connectors. It still can be achieved uh, with one Caraf instance if it's done uh, properly. Of course, you can make mistakes. That's how we are uh, learning, right? But uh, with, with some time, you will learn how to make uh, all these containers uh, st be stacked one on another and having uh, application layers uh, shipped as, as the bundles without uh, any, any issues. So um, Caraf has grown to be a platform foundation. Uh, so it's not any longer just place uh, where you drop all the things. It's uh, actually um, something more. As I already told, it allows you to run multiple applications at the same time. Uh, using different technologies, and it allows to separate them. Uh, it, so it might be kind of the Tomcat, if you will take a, a look on the isolation only, but uh, on the Tomcat you mainly run web applications. On uh, Caraf you can run web application next to some, so, some messaging application without any troubles. So, so this isolation has a, a different granularity than, uh, than for Tomcat, of course. And, uh, uh, one more thing which is uh, missing for, for um, Tomcat, for example, if we talk about the containers, right, uh, is uh, support for full product lifecycle. Um, Caraf has some, uh, uh, let's say, additional things which uh, makes development easier and also uh, it can uh, leverage some of the exi existing functionalities to make deployment easier. Um, there is existing failover, um, ex the failover exists for, for Caraf, so it supports master-slave uh, kind of the deployment. 
Uh, so in case if one, uh, the, if, in case if master instance goes away, then the slave uh, should go up and uh, start catching the traffic. Uh, the load balancing are mainly, uh, why I mentioned the load balancing, it's mostly built on top of uh, ActiveMQ uh, because um, if we are talking about the HTTP, anyway, we need always some kind of the load balancer in front to, to load balance HTTP. So Caraf itself doesn't bring that, but uh, it has uh, no issues with uh, making a load balancing with uh, existing things. And uh, uh, one thing wi which is uh, uh, my preferred, uh, and that's my preferred benefit from Caraf is, uh, it is very powerful inf infrastructure for making extensions. Um, you can make a custom plugin API if you wish, and uh, with the Caraf, it's pretty easy to deploy it, monitor, and make things uh, really look like, like they would be simple. Um, and now I'm gonna talk uh, about uh, OSGI, and uh, that's another picture you probably have seen multiple times, uh, right? So on the bottom line, we have a native operating system. Then we have a JVM, which hides uh, behind us its all native uh, freakness of, of the systems. And uh, above of that, we have uh, OGI framework. So bundles are, could go lower than JVM itself uh, because they might have uh, native code shipped uh, and run some, some DLLs or, or other extensions specific to the system. However, by most of the people, OGI is seen as uh, this modularity layer uh, with some lifecycle uh, support. Uh, but it's uh, much, much more and uh, the most valuable thing, I think, in the OCI is our services. Services is uh, actually the thing which makes uh, OCI awesome. I mean, if you will stay with the modules, that's fine, but if you're gonna to have benefits from OCI, you need to go for our services uh, because that makes the, this uh, environment dynamic. I mean, if you will shut down and uh, um, start up bundles, it doesn't differ a lot from starting up and shutting down some singular applications running on the Tomcat. But if you will start using services and seeing the interactions be between the components you have in your system, that makes a big difference, uh, especially that the services can be anything. It's up to you what you will uh, wrap as the service. It also uh, brings, uh, let's say, micro SOA uh, into the JVM, where you split the implementation uh, and API consumer from from the um, f from the uh, API provider, uh, so everything uh, is is uh, kind of uh, cleaned up in terms of uh, uh, dependencies and even Maven projects which are running on the OCI are looking cleaner than any other JE project. Believe me or not. Um, okay, uh, in many cases. Uh, OGI is shown as a worthless technology, which uh, brings uh, more troubles than uh, solutions. And it might be right. I don't want to judge uh, that because uh, if you are using uh, older libraries, which are which were built into JE world, and they are not used to to have uh, no access to whole class path, then it, you may feel a, a big pain, especially if you want to use uh, ORMs like Hibernate. I mean, Hibernate is a great example of the library which was ignoring OGI forever. I mean, they made the OGI integration after five years or so, so the issue in the Hibernate was there forever, but uh, the support was just made uh, last year because they did not see a, a big user base. However, if Hibernate did that, this means the OGI user base growing up. Um, so I, I won't judge if it brings solutions only or if it brings uh, more problems. It's up to you and, uh, well, you will see. Uh, and many libraries deny to support because of small user base. And uh, uh, Peter Cranes uh, did some small analysis from uh, Apache, uh, so from Maven Central. Uh, just by counting jars and dependencies. And he have found that uh, uh, Maven Central hosts about 426,000 jars and uh, 
grouped in uh, 46,000 projects. So it gives uh, some overview how, how many uh, things are there. Um, so just 10% of uh, jars uh, are having a valid OGI manifest entries, which means they, are, they can be installed on the OGI container without, let's say, any issues. But this presence of uh, headers doesn't really mean that they are ready to go there. It, it means that they are prepared, but you know, there are always narrow cases which could be uncovered by, by the providers. Uh, so you cannot read this, these numbers as the oracle, but it gives some impression. And uh, what is uh, very important is the uh, ranking of the OGI core jar, which is a uh, 36 dependency uh, in terms of the popularity. So if you will take a look on the popularity of uh, different jars in Maven Central, the most popular are usually commons and logging, uh, no surprise on that, uh, but uh, 36 position of uh, OGI core says that it's not something which is far, far away behind the, the forest. Uh, it's used and uh, many projects has transitive dependencies to it because they are trying to adopt OGI. And uh, um, as already told, the life cycle uh, is built in, in the, into the OGI. And most of the people uh, knows uh, how it works, that if we have bundle, it goes uh, into the installed state at the beginning, then it goes into the result if all the dependencies are present, and then uh, we can go into the active state. But there is one important thing which is uh, missing on this uh, diagram, which is when our services are up and ready to be used. So if we start uh, bundle, then uh, the bundle activator is called if there is any, right? And the bundle activator may start uh, services if, if, if it wishes, and uh, may, it should stop all the services basically at the end of, uh, of its call. So uh, if we're starting, right, that's the moment when the services can pop up, and if you are stopping, then the services should go down, and they should disappear. But there is one important thing which is uh, and not reflected on this diagram, which means that the services uh, after bundle became active may go down as well. I mean, the presence of the bundle doesn't really mean that all the services will be there because uh, some services are created on demand, some services might be created ad hoc. It doesn't really mean that the active state uh, brings the services. By most cases it is, but it's not necessarily uh, one hundred percent of the cases, and what is uh, very important that the OGI services are main source of dynamism in, in the system. I mean, if we will stay on the module layer only, uh, then the mm, dynamism is fairly limited. But with uh, services, uh, the game just games. Okay, uh, there are. Two uh, patterns uh, related uh, strongly to the OGI, which are whiteboard and whiteboard and the extender. Uh, they are very, very good. Uh, if you are going to use OGI, please consider uh, checking what those uh, patterns uh, are doing. I can give you a, a short introduction. So whiteboard is, uh, have you ever used swing? Yeah. So you, you know that if you want to listen for some action, you need to attach uh, action listener to component spreading the information, right? And what whiteboard do is uh, just register the listener as the service, and then it will be wired into the component willing to notify those things. So th this, uh, this gives a, a loosely coupling between the listeners and uh, um, let's say notification providers, and it's very good for for making plugins as well, uh, because uh, um, this la um, decoupling of, of, of the things uh, let you to be more declarative. And extender is another pattern which is uh, a bit more complicated, and uh, it's what actually does, it, it creates for you some services. For example, if you will take a look on uh, Spring integration into the OCI, uh, it leverage uh, Spring Core 
and uh, it just checked the location in the bundle in the class path if there is any XML files or if there are any uh, bundle headers su suggesting that there, that there is a uh, configuration for Spring. And then Extender creates asynchronously the uh, Spring beans for you. And uh, you are free to implement your own extenders and uh, they might go uh, more, uh, much more deeper uh, into the infrastructure. Uh, they can scan class path and so on. So they are much more powerful, but uh, from other hand, they are usually uh, more low, low level specific. And uh, now let's, let's talk a bit about the modularity versus extensibility, uh, because uh, if you will go for OGI, um, at some stage you will become, uh, you, you will be able to tell that your solution is modular. Uh, but when it will be extensible. So modular software have uh, very few, uh, very few uh, goals to achieve. So first of all, it needs to have a clear API and SPI. Uh, so uh, that's, that, that's uh, I think, obvious, right? If you, if you want to uh, write your models which are providing the API specific uh, parts, uh, then you need to separate them. Uh, but also, it's worth to distinguish API from the SPI. I mean, uh, if you write library or components, uh, then the API is for you, but SPI is for people who wants to integrate with you and provide some maybe low or high level integrations on top of your library. So th they not necessarily the same thing, uh, because uh, they might cover different layers of uh, your solution or your library, uh, but they, they, they need to be simply clear. Uh, so API uh, itself uh, should have minimal set of the dependencies. I mean, the best would be if it's just set of the interfaces, uh, because it's the easiest way uh, to run services later on. Uh, if you will start bringing abstract classes and some dependencies into the API, it will uh, start bringing some, some troubles and uh, will just make the development of the uh, models harder and harder. Um, and dependencies should be also uh, fi fine grinded. I mean, uh, try to avoid, uh, let's say, uh, dependencies which are bringing another set of the dependencies. I mean, the API uh, itself should, should be as simple as possible. If it depends on the SLF4J or one or two jars, it's fine. But if you start bringing uh, more and more dependencies, it's not looking like API any longer. And uh, um, it's also worth to note that um, API, SPI should lock, uh, sh should lock any implementation. I mean, it should not bring any implementation because it's API, right? Uh, if, um, your, if you have some common parts of, of uh, your code, which is built on top of the API, just create a core uh, bundle which provides uh, stops for, for extending the API, but make API uh, clear from abstract classes. And uh, there is a particular reason uh, why doing that, uh, because uh, the way how the OGI resolves the bundles uh, might uh, lock the possibility to wire in the service if you are depending on the abstract classes. So, uh, that's why the SPI, uh, that's why the API is usually on interfaces, uh, because then the uh, OGI resolver, which resolves the bundles, uh, doesn't really need to go into the abstract classes. And for example, uh, often the, the core bundle might need some other services, and uh, uh, that's fi that's fine. That could be achieved, but then just uh, uh, having this in the API will fail. And uh, on the other hand, we have extensible software. Uh, and th this extensible software, uh, of course, is uh, a step forward fr from being uh, modular. Uh, so to extend your software, you, of course, need to, to have some plugin ca uh, capabilities. Uh, I mean, that, that's the main reason why we are going into the modular, right? To uh, plug in the different parts or, or different implementations. Uh, in the way which uh, is as less verbose as it could be. Uh, so uh, the plugin system should not lock the extension actually to have its own extensions. Uh, 
the plugin uh, API uh, should not be as uh, uh, the best is uh, the best if it's stateless, if it has no uh, any explicit uh, life cycle and so on, uh, because then you, you, your plugin can uh, leverage on different plugins. So uh, you can imagine that uh, you, you have uh, some kind of uh, I don't know maybe file scanner or something like that, and you can scan the file systems. Uh, but then you can go for network scanning or scanning uh, different kinds of uh, servers like FTP, HTTP, NTFS, and so on. Uh, so this network uh, scanning could be achieved uh, into two different ways. You can create an abstract class, which will be your base network scanner, but you can also make a dedicated API, which is designed just for this network scanning, which will uh, try to open the connections and manage them. Uh, so it doesn't really need to, to be built uh, as the same plugin. It might uh, cover a different part, just making other plugins uh, working under, under it. So if you, if you go, if you use Eclipse, right, you can see that there is plenty of plugins. If you use uh, JDT, uh, it's pretty easy to plug in uh, new content assistant and so on. I'm, I'm not judging how fast it, it is, right? Uh, but it's not a problem to make a new proposal for JDT, if you wish, right? And uh, your uh, solution, if you want to be extensible, uh, sh should be uh, designed in, in the way which allows developers to do that. So to let them have a free hand what they want to implement. And extens uh, extension registration should be as less verbose as possible. That's, that's uh, important uh, because if you will uh, make the plugin uh, system um, verbose, then the extensions uh, will be also hard to write. Uh, the less verbose it is, the more declarative it is, the better it is, uh, the better it is for, for development purposes. Okay, uh, so now a uh, few, uh, let's say, um, uh, smart ass statements. Uh, so you cannot build extensible solution uh, without making uh, them modular first. Uh, second uh, smart ass uh, definition is your solution might be modular, but not extensible at all, uh, which is quite often. And the, the third statement is your software can be modular and extensible and still not run under the OGI. So OGI doesn't have a patent for achieving both. Uh, you can make it by your own and uh, it not necessarily fits the OGI model and it, there is nothing wrong in that. And now uh, let's talk a, a little bit about the concrete stuff, uh, how the Caraf-based solutions uh, can look like. And uh, if, we, if you start building something on top of Caraf, uh, there is few steps you need to take care about. Uh, first of all, it must be OGI friendly. Um, if you want to, to, to do this stuff good, then go and use services. Uh, decide if you want to use uh, any declarative services. It's up to you if it's Spring, Blueprint, or OGI declarative services. You can go with the plain OGI if you prefer. In some cases, it's, it makes sense. Um, and then you can go for extending Caraf uh, to support your domain uh, to be close to the solution you build. Then brand it, assemble, and ship to the customer. Uh, let's talk a bit about the making things OGI friendly because uh, I believe that's the one of the hardest parts uh, if you go into the OGIs. And it's the same whenever you go with Caraf or any other uh, OGI based stuff. If you use Maven, that's easy. Uh, you just need to, to make uh, to, to, to take care about the ossification of your dependencies. Um, if you can, then push changes back to the project, then you will get uh, updates for free. Uh, it's uh, often a case that uh, the project is not active and then you need to wrap it. It, it happens, for example, some projects like Apache Poi, where is no single commit since I think two years at least. Uh, they are not active and there, it makes no sense to OGI them because uh, their architecture doesn't fit at all uh, what was the OGI. And uh, then you need to wrap it. And if you wrap it, just make sure that 
um, you share it with community because the more testers, uh, the, the more community, the bigger community you have for, for your bundle, the better it will be. Uh, there are some cases uh, which are specific uh, to different users and you not necessarily cover all of them with your user, with, with, with your use case. And there are border cases, which, uh, for example, we hit with the Apache POI. Uh, it was working properly with uh, document scanning, but it was failing with uh, uh, PowerPoint scanning because some missing, uh, I don't know, schema things or, or something like that. And I spent two days trying to make this Apache POI run properly. And then I found that the issue was caused by XML bins. And sadly, XML bins uh, are that old that they are also not maintained. So the solution was to wrap XML bins together with Apache POI. It, I was really unlucky with this solution. I dislike it, but there was no other way to make it because uh, this code which was generated by XML bins is uh, leveraging a class for name. And I didn't want to go for, um, you know, uh, bytecode waving just to avoid that because it was making completely no sense. Uh, but anyway, the wrapping of uh, um, existing libraries is fine, as long as you try to, to make it uh, covered with the community. And also the important thing is uh, if you go for the OSGI, uh, please keep naming convention strict and clear. The best is uh, when your symbolic name is reflecting the root package you have in the bundle. I mean, that's the best. It doesn't have to be all the time, but it, the symbolic name is made for uh, making it, uh, let's say, machine friendly. And if you will start looking for um, some troubles, uh, what happened and, and so on, often in the logs you have a symbolic name. And uh, sometimes logs get weird. I mean, you can lose uh, diagnostic context and so on. Uh, so making, uh, naming uh, clear, uh, it's always uh, a good practice and it doesn't really mean if it's a, an OGI. I mean, we have learned that uh, um, making a OGI bundles uh, with dashes in the names, is not exactly the, the best thing because then we cannot assume the package, the root package in the bundle. So we simply stepped back and we went back to the nesting of the Maven model. Sometimes it causes some troubles, but at least our packages in the system, in our build system, are reflecting what they are containing. Uh, I mean, uh, the Maven build is uh, constructed in the way which follows actually the nesting of the bundles. So th that's worth, worth to use. Uh, for Maven users, uh, a quick note, how to make uh, a use of, of uh, OGI. So first of all, you need to uh, integrate Maven Bundle plugin, which is uh, developed as part uh, of Apache Felix project. And it allows you to generate a manifest. Uh, this part is just allowing you to change a Maven lifecycle. Sorry. And uh, uh, these extensions uh, actually allows you to switch the packaging from jar into the bundle. It makes uh, a big difference because if you just generate manifest, then this manifest is deattached uh, from a build cycle. And uh, except providing metadata, you don't get anything for free. If you will change the packaging to bundle, then the Maven bundle plugin all will also verify contents of your manifest. You will check if all dependencies which should be there are declared in your manifest. And uh, I have found that many projects are trying to use Maven bundle plugin just to generate OGI manifests, and they are failing because uh, there is some different packages, uh, they, there are some renamings and so on, and then the OGI integration doesn't work because they have no validation phase um, at the end of the build. So developers, even if they are unfriendly with uh, OGI, doesn't really know that they have just broken OGI integration. And the second part is uh, uh, providing this bundle package, uh, sorry, bundle packaging. And since then, you, you can make uh, usage of, of uh, Maven bundle plugin. Th there are some instructions. I, I have skipped this part. Uh, but by default, uh, there is a convention that all the packages are private. Uh, so you will not export anything. 
and uh, um, that's fair enough for running your, your bundle. Uh, instructions allow allows you to use wildcards, so you not uh, you don't need to explicitly say all your dependencies. Maven bundle plugin will collect them and make um, necessary import statements. Um, I was on the dependency justification for a moment. So as I told, it's quite simple. If you if your dependency uses Maven, um, I I have done this with a few projects and uh, uh, people are usually welcome to get the OGI in integration. If you have any project which uh, you are using on in OGI but you are wrapping it, just try to see if it's possible to push these things back. There are some strange projects like Elasticsearch and they are doing shading and uh, shading is a bad idea if you are going into the OGI. And anyway, the shading is, is a sign that something is broken with your stuff, but uh, that's one of the judgment I can make. Uh, and uh, sh uh, uh, this simply causes some, some troubles and doesn't really solve all the class loader problems you, you, you may have. Uh, so as I already told, push the OGI manifest generation back to uh, your dependencies if, if you can. And if the project is inactive, then just make a service mix bundle for it. Uh, we have a few, few uh, I believe, about 100 bundles or, or so. They are uh, released couple, uh, each, uh, every couple of weeks or months. So you will get updates uh, going into for, for you. I mean, if you will report just, uh, j just the Jira issue that you need the new version of uh, your wrapper bundle, uh, it's quite easy to get to get it uh, as long as it's just a minor version upgrade and by most of the time the upgrades you need uh, are just minor versions because uh, they are providing the bug fixes if you do migration to the new version of the library it's a, a whole different story and uh, anyway you might need to create a new bundle but going with the minor updates it's uh, it's fair, fairly easy okay now um, a few words about extending Apache Caraf. Uh, first of all, if, if you are building some stuff, you will probably need uh, uh, to adopt default configuration uh, of the authentication. Uh, so by default, Caraf uses a property file, which allows you to sign in uh, over SSH to manage Caraf. You can also use this property file uh, to authenticate uh, web requests if you are running, for example, servlet, if you are running uh, uh, application with Apache Shiro, all you need is just to use uh, Java authentication and authorization services. And that's um, pretty easy to get, uh, but just remember to change the default password if you use. Um, second step is to grab bundles you have deployed in uh, Apache Cara features to let people deploy it uh, fast and easy. And uh, at the end, uh, just provide uh, commands if you see a reason for that. For us, for example, uh, we have a set of the test commands which are just producing a, a test payloads uh, to our services. Uh, because um, we have some messaging kind of, of the solution and uh, just starting uh, some additional process just to put some messages into the JMS queues, uh, takes some time. So we, we have de developed the commands which are uh, used in the development mode with just putting the, some files or contents of, of the predefined files to make the testing easier. Um, supported authentication sources for CARAF are, are JDPC, LDAP, OGI configuration admin, property files, and public key. So public key is, is uh, very good if you are using SSH. Uh, so you can use it as authentication keys uh, under the Unix. Works, works like a harm. Uh, CARA features are um, dedicated mechanism for, for CARA because uh, back a while there was no standard mechanism to provide a f um, functional sets of the bundles into the OGI. So, uh, Caraf development team has uh, developed a uh, own kind of the standard, which is very simple and just let you to mention which bundles should be installed. Uh, there are multiple sources supported for it uh, via PAX URL project. 
Uh, mostly people are using MVN, but uh, it's possible to use a file system repository or HTTP if you are going directly to HTTP server. But if, if you are a developer, if you are using Maven, then Maven coordinates are things that you already know and uh, they are the best for um, managing all the features. And uh, it's worth to note that Apache Cara features are supports uh, transient dependency, so if you have uh, feature A depending on feature B and feature B depending on feature C, and if you want to install a feature A, then first of all, Caraf will go over the uh, feature definition, check if the C ins is installed, if not, then it will install it, if B, then it will check if B is installed, if not, then it will install it, and then finally will install a feature A uh, you requested. Um, it's also possible to use version ranges, uh, it's handy uh, because uh, you, if you go with the uh, full product or life cycle, you have updates and so on. And then uh, it's kind of the trouble if some component is bound to uh, older version and some component is uh, bound to the newer version, but those versions are compatible. It's like uh, minor updates and uh, having a duplicated uh, uh, bundles installed be just because uh, one of my components uh, have all dependencies. So uh, version ranges are very handy uh, if you are going for, for bigger deployments and uh, you have uh, um, more complicated dependencies. So uh, here you can see a uh, simplest definition of CARA feature. So on top of it, uh, you, you can see a features root element, which is a wrapper for, for the, let's say, repository. Um, then you have a reference to another repository. It is optional. Uh, so if you have any other features which are depending, they, not, uh, they might be defined in separate XML files. Uh, what makes uh, um, usually troubles during the trainings uh, are this part, XML slash features. So here at the beginning you can see it's a MVN which suggests that it's a Maven um, dependency. Then the group ID, artifact ID, our obvious version is also obvious, but XML is a type of the dependency and features is a classifier. So um, in the Maven repository, you can find the dependency which has a XML type set and the features as the classifier. So it, you don't need to use features classifier all the time. For example, we have drop it because it's just redundant for us. Okay. and. Uh, then you have a uh, actual feature definition, which uh, has a name and the version. Version is optional, so you don't need to put it. If you want, then it will be a zero, zero, zero. Uh, so it's not mandatory. Then uh, you have a second feature, which is a transient dependency. You can see usage of uh, version ranges. So it checks that uh, version 1.1 and uh, one point anything uh, is okay but 1.2 1, 1 is, is not, right? Just, just by having a version ranges. And then uh, there are two bundles which are part of this feature um, using the Maven coordinates. I just put the um, example artifact ID and uh, another artifact ID, but you can imagine that it's uh, your Maven project coordinates. Okay, uh, how to start this, uh, this stuff? Because this file is, is uh, very simple. If you will install it uh, into the Maven repository, then you just use features add URL and giving the uh, location in the Maven repository. So you do not have to point to the file system location. If you are using Maven repositories, for example, Nexus, it will be downloaded for you. Um, of course, the CARAF Maven configuration is split from your development configuration. So if you have a, a company specific repositories, then you need to apply the configuration change. But it's, it's uh, just one file. If you want to have uh, your feature installed, then just execute features install and give the name of it. Uh, if you have a couple versions, then uh, just after my solution, make a slash and give an exact version of, uh, of solution you of the feature you want to install. You can also make it uh, bootable by default. So each time if you will uh, boot a caraf, it will install this automatically for you. Uh, so there is a configuration file called uh, Apache Cara Feature CFG, and uh, there is a list of the repositories which are enabled by default, and also boot features which are installed 
when you launch your car. Uh, okay, um, we are going to the close uh, um, to the end slowly, but always uh, implementing commands. Uh, that's most of uh, um, that's the the part which uh, gives uh, most of the fun to the developers to uh, start writing their own shell. And here you can see that uh, this command just print some statement. It doesn't return anything. It uses uh, Felix Go Go uh, because it was, uh, I believe, first project which provided uh, annotations and uh, functional shell for OGI. And then Caraf just have wrapped this uh, into own form. Um, as you can see, it's uh, very simple to write command. Of course, there are few additional steps. Uh, which needs to be done. Um, so first of all, you need to make a blueprint descriptor, which will export this uh, this command. Uh, and there is there are three packages which needs to be imported into your bundle command. They are transient, and sadly, uh, they must be explicitly added. So the, that's kind of the tricky. But anyway, uh, Caraf team is working on the improvement on this uh, area. So. Uh, we should get the commands uh, free of the blueprint. So annotations will be all you need to, to make a command. And uh, as I told before, then writing extensions will be as less verbose as possible. Uh, okay, the branding is the um, uh, last part. Uh, usually you don't care about it, but if you want to have a fancy um, welcome screen in your shell, if some administrator going over SSH to it, uh, there is a branding.properties file which has uh, two properties. So the first one is a prompt and the second one is a welcome screen or something like that. So there is plenty of uh, ASCII generators uh, in the network. So you can cre create your ASCII art with the uh, name of your project. Just package it as the bundle, copy to the lib, uh, lib directory of the Cara fruit, and then you will get your welcome screen for free. Uh, you can check the documentation uh, about the exact steps, but believe me or not, uh, ASCII art is, is still live. Uh, okay, uh, last part, which is, I believe, still uh, important, is packaging um, into the form, which is ready to ship to the customer. And uh, in the Caraf, uh, we have a features Maven plugin, which simply gets all the Maven dependencies, file system dependencies you have declared, copy them into the uh, some file system location into the repository. That's the last argument, which is uh, mandatory. Uh, so this output directory is uh, simply the place where the graph will collect all the dependencies, all the OGI bundles you have mentioned in your, in your featured descriptors. And then uh, you need to create zip and tar uh, with Apache assembly plugin. If you are running graph 2.x, that's the only one way, but with Caraf 3, there is a new plugin, uh, and uh, all you need to do is just to say, I want to have features from these URLs, and that's all. You will get zip and tar gz for, for free without any messing with uh, Maven assembly plugin. So you will get the binary distribution of the Caraf build for free. Okay, what we have learned, uh, let me see the timing. Okay, uh, if I'm not wrong, we have 10 minutes left, right? Okay, so what we have learned. Uh, so things which I will tell might be obvi obvious for you, uh, but anyway, it's, it's worth to, to mention. Uh, first of all, we are running few projects and getting metrics from all of them and finding the root cause of the issue is hard. I mean, we are running uh, on top of Caraf, Camel, ActiveMQ, CXF, and Cassandra. And if something fails, if we have some bottleneck, um, sometimes you just need to go with the instrumentation to find what, what the heck is going on. I mean, sometimes Cassandra is, seems to be okay, but the, the processing is, is very slow. Uh, so uh, on the production environment, uh, the one Cassandra node which goes down can uh, cause a huge performance degradation. We, we cannot, of course, avoid that, uh, but those are things we, we are still try, trying to avoid. And common problems we have, uh, we had actually, because all of them are already solved. Uh, so developers are not 
uh, familiar with OGI. And uh, the learning curve is, um, is not, um, let's say, long, but uh, it requires some attention to be paid. And uh, uh, if people are committed to go there, it's, it's, fa it's fair enough. But uh, in company where I was, we have uh, adopted .NET developers to write Java. And it was a pain. It was a pain in listening uh, how good .NET was. And uh, um, you, even if the OGI has, uh, has lots of, of benefits for them, they were unseen. And uh, there are also some Java projects. For example, Mule ESP has des denied OGI because uh, for them it was uh, simply overcomplicated. And uh, well, that was uh, their statement. But anyway, they didn't want to go there. And uh, um, there are people which will never be committed into the OGI. And dependency upgrades for us are uh, uh, related to the feature version ranges as well. Uh, because in the Maven bundle plugin, you can use a macros which will generate version ranges for you. But with Caraf, you cannot. I mean, the Caraf features, if you are using them, you need to write by the hand ranges. And if you update a version of your bundle or, or, or the feature, then the range needs to be updated by the hand. So it's uh, rather verbose to go there. Uh, even if it gets uh, some benefits. Uh, by default, a Java service wrapper waits just 30 seconds to shut down your CARAF. So if you are running uh, CARAF uh, under the Linux as the service and you want to shut down your, your CARAF instance, uh, by default, it just waits 30 seconds. If you, have, if you have some heavy processing and you just need to ensure that all the things you are processing right now is processed be because you, you don't want to lose the data, then this Java service wrapper uh, kills everything. I mean, for example, Apache Camel waits, uh, I think, uh, six minutes uh, to shut down, but it's uh, to, to have a grace graceful shutdown. After six minutes, Car uh, Camel will just drop remaining messages. But anyway, it won't happen because Java service wrapper will kill it after half minute. And uh, um, VM queues, uh, we, if you are using uh, v, VM components uh, like we did uh, with Apache Camel, uh, they are very sensitive for bottlenecks uh, because if processing is too slow, you will just blow up the whole JVM. Uh, so it's uh, f for places where you have a bottleneck, just make sure you have a mechanism which is safe from the memory point of view. Uh, other things, uh, predefined assemblies are rather big. I'm talking here about service mix, uh, which has uh, uh, some JBI legacy. Uh, there is also a talent ESP, but talent, for example, is uh, at least 300 megabytes because it wraps a gazillion of camel dependencies. So if you want to run talent ESP, you need to download uh, 300 megabytes, even if the caraf is uh, just a couple megabytes. I mean, the caraf is about, I believe, about 20 megabytes or so, so it's not that big. And uh, integrating, integrating testing of, of CARAF is uh, slow, especially if you try to run mo more things on, on it. I mean, by integrating testing, I mean here to run CARAF, launch the services, put some test data, and verify if uh, uh, things which should happen already happened. Um, other thing, visual tools are nice. They are producing useless artifacts. I mean. Uh, if you want to go for, for, for example, for uh, Apache Camel, right, for, for middleware, uh, it's, uh, th there are some visual tools which allows you to design mediation flow and so on. Um, they will generate some code for you, but you won't ever test this code. I mean, it's like a black box. Uh, and uh, if you try to make your, your uh, project run under the CARAF, I would prefer uh, to, to go without generated code. I mean, if you can uh, avoid, then just generate uh, uh, from drugs big schemas, and that's all. That's all you need, uh, because everything else is simply too, too complicated. Um, CARAF also supports uh, CAR files, and CAR files allows you to package part of your solution into the offline, and then drop it to the CARAF as uh, one big file. It's kind of the ER packaging for, for CARAF, um, of course, for offline deployments, it makes sense. 
um, but it has also uh, drawbacks. For example, it changes state of the whole instance. So it doesn't just install the bundles into the data directory. If you will remove a data directory, so you will simply reset current instance, then the car files are still there. You need to remember about dropping the car contents which was created for you. So it's, uh, I doesn't like cars because of that, because they are changing the installation and you need to have uh, manual steps to roll them back. That's why we are not using car files. We are just assembling car and shipping it uh, together. And uh, as, as told, CARA feature URLs management is painful sometimes, right? Uh, CARA is not smart enough, so if you will have uh, uh, two different versions of uh, CARA features, they both will be present. And uh, even if you are not willing to have them, you will land with them because CARA checks the older repositories you define in the XML file, and then they are present in the a list URL command. So you will get simply even things you, you did not uh, declare explicitly. And of course, we, there are still standard OGI problems. Caraf doesn't solve them, just add a new one. Uh, usage of le legacy libraries, of course. And one of things I really dislike is a blueprint service caching. Uh, so you can imagine that you start some thread which uses OGI service, and then the bundle which exports this service goes down. Because of Blueprint, uh, it caches the services and wraps them. Your thread is not aware that your service is down. So you get plenty of the exceptions. Uh, and that uh, uh, brings the, the huge drawbacks of, of the declarative uh, kind of, of uh, injection. So it's hard to determine uh, impact of the update and uh, it's hard to write the update scenario. In the perfect world, if you shut down the bundle and the services are going down, all the users uh, should go into the waiting state, right? Waiting for the service to go back. With Blueprint, you are blind for that. That's bad. Okay, got things go, goes last. Uh, Camel sc scales up very well. Uh, so we were able to increase load about 10 times from the previous library we were using uh, for processing our data. Um, Active, ActiveMQ is very good for handling load balancing. I mean, all the uh, contents we are getting from, from um, our integrate, uh, integrated solutions are going to our system v via ActiveMQ. It works like a harm. Uh, VM endpoints are very fast. Uh, so in all places where we have no risk about the uh, bottlenecks, we are using VM because we just don't, don't want to use Sorry, this guy, oh, Cassandra is very fast. I mean, uh, if you will add patching to it, it's like uh, you can put every amount of the data in it and it will even not snooze on it. I mean, uh, we had the, some per performance issues and uh, we solved them just by adding aggregation of the data, waiting, uh, for example, 30 seconds for 100 rows to be persistent in Cassandra, and then all our performance issues just disappeared. A uh, few, few patterns which worked pretty well for us. Uh, central entry point for, for, for application. So we have a ActiveMQ queue which leverages content-based based routing. Uh, so it gets uh, all the types which are supported by the system and we use this queue to glue components together because uh, um, our clients are using different parts of the solution. There are some customizations made for them and we have a dedicated part. So this central entry point just uh, is, is specific to each, com uh, each uh, customer and well, it's configurable. So uh, it's uh, just a few configuration files just to throw things into the places where they will do uh, cause uh, actions which should be done for a given customer. And for, sorry, for other customers, we have a, a different configurations and uh, it's very easy by this way to track uh, the incoming load, the, how many messages we are processing. Even for internal communication, we are using the central entry point. So uh, the, our, our integrators are pu putting data there, but ourselves, we are doing the same. So if our component wants to publish the message, it needs to go back to this queue. Um, of course, we are trying to avoid uh, uh, cycles. It's quite easy because uh, our system is built to transform data into different forms 
and persist them, uh, persist this data in the, in the Cassandra. So we never get the, the same message sent twice from components. So we, we are avoiding by this way uh, cycles. But uh, if you will try to send message uh, all the time to, to, to this queue, of course, you will get the cycle. But we, we are not having this issue because we have uh, all the time different types. And separate destinations for OGI services. We are using service tracker to dynamically create camel roads. Uh, except this uh, blueprint uh, caching issue, it works very well. Uh, so uh, we are having some kind of the plugin mechanism, which is based on the services, but to avoid uh, issues with the uh, queuing and the locking of the calls, we are using uh, uh, queues. So uh, fr from the JMS queue, we have a listener which calls uh, OGI service. And uh, if the service goes down, right, uh, the, the, mess the messages are remained in the queue. And, and if the service goes back, it uh, get, gets called. It works uh, with, for, for um, let's say, in-only uh, messaging. So if our service doesn't return anything. But anyway, that's uh, just two patterns which uh, worked for us. And uh, we are running out of this uh, time, so I will skip. Um, most of the Caraf 3.0. There is a new component which is called Service Guard, which allows you to limit visibility of the services between the bundles. So that's the uh, most important thing. Any questions? Please ask. Um, so 2x version is used already in uh, most of the places I'm in here, service mix and service mix uh, just upgraded a uh, car to version 2.3, uh, 0.3, I believe, or something like that. So they are far behind the schedule. And that's why we, uh, th there was idea to bring OGI 5 uh, to 2.x to make easier uh, service mix to get some features from it. But just because of that, I mean, um, there is no strong requirement for it. And anyway, there is a service mix 5 already out there, uh, but this uh, causes another issue. When Service Mix 5 will be upgraded to Caraf 3.0, right? Uh, 4.3.1, which is compatible with Java 7. Uh, yeah, 4.3.1, uh, because uh, after Java 7 wa was released, uh, 4.3 was incompatible with, with it. 4.3.1, uh, 4.3.0 was uh, incompatible with, on the binary level, and 4.3.1 is uh, compatible with it. And uh, anyway, the, um, if you are just developing regular library, uh, you don't really see uh, differences between different specification versions uh, in the OSGI because the core is uh, very stable and uh, the ideas there uh, are not changing that much. I mean, the specification is just uh, rather adding new functionalities and uh, extensions to be possible to make in the framework, but uh, rather nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. The class for name is uh, giving a hard time to any OGI adopter. And uh, if you are running a, a library, right, which, is, uh, which needs to be wrapped, uh, there are few workarounds for that. Uh, I mean, uh, for, uh, for uh, ROM, which uh, was RSS syndication, right, it was using this class for name and uh, just trying to check three different class holders for it. What we have done in Apache Service Mix bundles was just to override uh, one class, which was uh, calling these class loaders and trying to get the, this class loader. 
Uh, so sadly, we, we had to copy the whole class from ROM. Uh, and uh, during the uh, wrapping of, of the package uh, fr from the ROM, our class has higher priority than the class fr from the ROM. So that was the trick which uh, avoided the class for name problem for us. Uh, because we simply added the uh, class loader which should be actually called. Because the free context class loader is not always set, Especi especially if you are not running web applications, then the free context class loader is usually missing, right? Uh, so for web applications, it's uh, rather do, do the trick, but we are experiencing the same issues. Uh, so for class for name, uh, there is no uh, really a, a, a solution which is uh, leveraging all, all the uh, libraries. Each library is a, a little bit different and uh, you cannot make uh, this, uh, uh, let's say, generic one. Yep, so so uh, if you have library during, doing the class for name and if it uses class, uh, class loader, if you can uh, ship the class, ol class loader to it, it's good, it's good, right? But if you cannot, then uh, you need to hack it. Yeah, uh, that's the kind of uh, yeah, that, that's the kind of the chicken egg problem, right? With the hibernate, for example, trying to to um, um, yeah d d discover d discover entities, and for a, for a long time, people was trying to attach entities as fragments uh, to hibernate because hibernate was simply not aware that the class loader is it's not a, a white class loader as uh, they have uh, under the Tomcat. But anyway, nowadays even Hibernate supports OGI, so uh, we are getting there and uh, hopefully more and more libraries will love OGI. We even have a uh, log4j looking for uh, OGI support. So we are going there. Questions? Okay, then we are done. Thank you for visiting this talk. I hope you learned something. So. That's all.